Hi everybody, thanks for coming back to OneMinuteDigital.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make sketchy looking type in Adobe Illustrator. So let's make a new document and let's just type. I think Illustrator defaults as usual to Myriad, but that's fine. And let's type you look sketchy to me. Sorry for the background noise today. It's summer in LA and I got my windows open. Okay, you look sketchy to me. I think I made that all caps before too. Now, what we need to do is open a few windows. Go to Window, Appearance, and Window, Graphic Styles. Have both of those open while you're working. Now, what we're going to do is create our sketchy type with the Appearance palette. So, with what you've typed selected, in your appearance palette, go to the bottom and find the FX button. It says Add New Effect, click and hold. Now scroll down till you get to Stylize and Scribble. Now it already opens, it already will change it because you have Preview selected. Um, yours might not look like this. I played with it a little bit today, so it looks like this, but yours will probably look more like default. It'll look like that. Um, <clears throat> that's okay. What we need to do is change it. But if you look here under Settings, you have a lot of presets already, which might work for you if you look and you select and play with them. That might be exactly what you're looking for, and if so, just click OK and you're done. Um, but if you want to create something a little bit more custom, go back to the default, and we're going to play with this a little bit. Now let's change the angle to about 45 degrees. Now this is just my preference. You can have anything in here that you want. That's why it's completely custom. <laughs> um, keep the path overlap at zero. The variation um, let's just make that a little bit of a variation, change that to three or four. Uh, for your stroke width, we want to keep this pretty small, so I'm going to say make it 0.01. For your curviness, that's the loopiness of the sketch inside, I'm going to bring that down because I want it to be a little bit straight, kind of a cross-hatchy look, not a, not a loopy look. So let's make that 1%. For variation, um, let's make that a little bit bigger. We want those scribbles to go every which way, so let's change that to 50%. Uh, spacing, keep it very small. Again, we're going to have a little bit of not too much space in between, and for variation, just leave that at 0 0.01. And now you can see it made a nice sketchy bit of type there for you. Um, I'm going to say OK, but I think it's going to be better in bold, so when you start out, maybe start working in bold. There we go. Now we can see that sketch in between um, and it looks a lot better. Um, I'm not sure. I think I want a little bit more space in between. So with that selected, in your appearance palette, you'll see there's a new effect there called Scribble. Click there. That brings your box back up, and you can make changes to this. Um, I want a little bit more spacing in between. Preview. Sometimes you have to click it on and off. Yeah, I like that. I like the a little bit looser in between. I'm going to say OK. Now that's a fill with no stroke. So if we want to add a stroke to this, um, just in your appearance palette again, Hover over it, this box where it says Add New Stroke and click there. And now you have a stroke in your appearance palette as well. Um, I kind of like that actually, but we just to show you how we can play with it, you can change the weight of your stroke here. Um, and when you click on, oh, when you have the stroke selected, go down again to the Effects box, click and hold, and this time go to Distort and Transform and Roughen. Click Preview. And now see our stroke around the edge changed a little bit. You can play with this. Um, I would make this very small and take the detail down. Well, up maybe. Actually, yeah, let's bring it up a little bit. And that's just going to give it maybe a smooth look to the outside of it. I like that. That looks okay. And there you go. You look sketchy to me. No offense. Um, but if you remember, I had a different font. Now, because we haven't outlined this, it's still a font. You can change it to whatever font you want. Go to Window, Type, Character, and just change it. I mean, you can go up and down, pick through your library of fonts, and change it to whatever you got to make to make whatever it is you need. I In my original one, I chose uh, kind of an already distressed font. I'm not sure why, because I'm lazy, I think. It's Iowan Old Style. Uh, I think I did Bold Italic, because I liked how that looked when it was sketchy. Um, and But it's, it's kind of plain because it's all on a baseline. It looks very straight and that takes a little bit of the edge out of it. So the only thing you have to do is play with this like you would your fonts regularly in your character palette. Let's select this S 
And over here in our character palette, let's just make it, it's 78 now, let's make that 90 points. It's going to make it bigger. And let's make it 100 points. And maybe the K, let's make that a lowercase k. And let's work the baseline shift a little bit. Bring it up. You can use, click on these little arrows here. You can highlight it and use your arrow keys to go up and down. It takes, a, it, it's a little slow when you do this because there's a lot of effects that Illustrator has to remember here. So it's trying really hard, so just bear with it. And I'm going to go ahead and on the character rotation box, I'm going to click a few degrees and that's going to rotate it. If you watch that K, it's leaning backwards a little bit. You can rotate that a little bit. So it's off the baseline and a little bit crooked. I like that. Let's make this E a little bit smaller. Let's make that 65 points. I think it looks good there. Let's make that T. Let's keep it that size, but make it go up a little bit. Again, highlight your baseline shift box. Use your arrows to go up and down to get a nice effect. And highlight it there and rotate it maybe negative this time to go the other way. And now you see it's leaning a little bit the other way. And let's make that a small C. Yeah, small H. That's pretty cool. And let's change this font, why not, to something else. That looks cool. I like it. Now you'll see you might want to adjust the spacing in between here. Highlight that T, bring in your tracking or kerning a little bit. Um, let's say negative 50. And that brings that T closer, or that C closer there. And I like that. All together, bring in the letting. Um, that's a little bit much. Let's make it 80. And bring in that letting, highlight that, bring that to about 70. Just space it. All it is is playing with your settings. And that's what this is about. It's about customizing it, getting it to look the way you want it to look. Um, again, if you highlight this and go back to your appearance palette, you can make changes here as well. Um, right now it's showing it has no fill. I'm not sure why it defaults to that, but click and hold there and change that fill color to anything that you want. And you can do that with the stroke as well. I like it black on black. I'm going to leave it black like that. And now do yourself a favor. When you have this selected and you look in your appearance palette and you see this little image here, that is the preview of the effect that you've just made. Click and drag that into your graphic styles palette and it makes a swatch. And now whatever you type, you can blah blah blah, you can apply that swatch to it rather than having to do all of those things all over again. And that works for shapes as well as type. There you go. To manipulate it, just highlight it, go back into your fill and stroke, click on that scribble that you made, and change these settings. You can change the angle, let's see, 60, 90, whatever you want. You can get rid of the stroke. You can change the spacing to make it lots of space in between or little. Change the weight of the stroke. There we go. I like that one. Or get rid of the stroke if you want. And there we go. So there's a lot of things you can do. This is just the tip of the iceberg with customizing your stroke and fill palettes and giving it that scribble effect. Okay, I hope this was really helpful for you. Until next time, bye-bye.